We're back here at Black Country 4 before this week to take a look at cooling systems. No matter if your Landy runs on petrol or diesel, they all have cooling systems that look something like this. Quite simply, hot water from around the engine is cooled in the radiator and then the cycle continues. As you can see here, there are lots of different parts and much that can go wrong with those parts. When cooling systems go wrong, it can be expensive. Under many different conditions, the water can boil over quite quickly. The steam increases pressure and will find the easiest way to escape, usually through pipe joints or head gaskets, damaging your engine along the way. And when the temperature drops too low, with the winter you could get problems with freezing, obviously water freezes in the water jackets, expands and cracks the block. Antifreeze can stop this, but it's not very environmentally friendly at all for animals and other things. Mm. Stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen plenty of reports of it, cats dying and such. Yep. Uh, Lose, yeah. So, uh, so we found a different solution to, to that, and that's to run Evans waterless cooling. Evans waterless coolants, as the name suggests, do not have water in them, and as such, they remove the problems associated with freezing and boiling. The boiling point is above 180 degrees centigrade, eliminating overheating. Because of that, the pressure in the system is far lower, so the stress on the cooling system overall is reduced, and with a freezing point of minus 40 degrees Celsius, antifreeze is also a thing of the past for most. The other bonus of not running water around the system is rust. There won't be any here, and Evans claim to prevent corrosion and stop erosion. This stuff will last for over 20 years and is non-toxic. What's not to like? We've started this process by draining out the cooling system, and we've gone a bit further here because we don't plan on changing the new coolant for 20 years or so, so we've replaced all the pipes with silicon ones. Because they look nice. Now let's see the state of the old ones. We've taken the pipes off of the car, and to, and to be fair, they're not that bad. Um, you can see a slight bit of like um, rusty water inside where the inside of the engine maybe started to corrode due to the antifreeze and stuff. But they're generally not too bad. I mean, we've got one here that we've taken off another vehicle, and you can see that the water and the antifreeze started to perish the edges of the rubber um, as right through to the outside to be honest I mean you can see where the water's come through. Mm. Um, One of the things we'll be looking for on our pipes if people at home are taking this where the jubilee clips are Yeah, going any splits towards the edges that could maybe go underneath the jubilee clip or any splits around where it sits you can see where it's gone in there where it's been under that much pressure and then just generally wear and tear and split there. So would you recommend changing these pipes? Yeah, I'd just recommend changing them, yeah. New pipes, new, new antifreeze, new everything. All right. So we've drained all the water out of the system. The next job then is to, is to get our new pipes fitted. Yeah, fit all the new pipes. Obviously change it all over. We've used silicon hoses. We'll put the part numbers on the screen and they're available from Bearmac. So whilst we're leaving Brett to fit all the new hoses, we'll take a look at this, the Evans prep fluid. Now we'll need to put this in next before we put the waterless coolant in. What this stuff does is it goes around the engine, hunting out the last bits of water. We've drained off the system, but there'll still be a reasonable amount in there. So we'll put this in, check for leaks, make sure Brett's done a good job of fitting the hoses. So we've refilled the cooling system now with the prep fluid, exactly the same as we would have done if it was just water. We don't need to have it filled to the brim this time because we're just going to run it up hot and drain it straight back out again. Evans do say we don't need to put the cap on the radiator, we need to let the air come out back through the system. And so let's run the vehicle up so it's nice and warm now. We'll get all the water and all the air out of the system. We've filled the cooling system with prep fluid, run it up so the engine's nice and hot now and Brett's just draining the last of it out and getting us ready to fill up with the PowerCool 180 waterless coolant. With this stuff, we're not going to add any water or any antifreeze to it. So if you had any leaks during that uh, priming phase, just get those cured at this point because we don't want to be adding water to this afterwards. It's always advised to, they do do this stuff in a little half a litre or one litre tub as well. I reckon get some of that just for topping it up. We don't want to add water to this, but Evans do say in the emergency, if you have a, something horrendous happen, you can fill it up with water to get yourself home. So we're gonna go ahead, fill this up normal, just as if it were water, and crack on, happy motoring. And that concludes this coolant change. So all in all, we swapped out our water coolants for Evans waterless coolant. We changed the hoses and Jubilee clips along the way. 
On difficulty rating, Brett, what do you reckon to that? How hard was that? Straightforward, really, just hoses and clips and screws. Yeah. Straightforward. The only tools we needed was a screwdriver yeah. or socket to undo yeah. the Jubilee clips. And the wire brush to clean all the terminals before we put the pipes on, that's it really. You got it. And how long do you reckon these pipes and that will last now before we need to... Obviously the, the pipes should last quite a while now, obviously as long as you keep them clean and they don't get contaminated or anything, they should last the life of the vehicle. Yeah. And so Evans say the same with the coolants as well. Um, we filled the, we've gone through the prep fluid process, we've gone through putting the waterless coolant in now. We've run the engine up to temperature a bit, but is there anything we need to do to keep an eye on it? Yeah, if I was you, I'd take it out for a good run. Once it's run up to temperature and the thermostat's open, just get back home and check the level, obviously, when it's cool, so not when it's warm. That's it. So, fingers crossed now, we should, uh, well, be set for the rest of this engine's life.